So remember what I, I'm going to keep saying this. Enemies after our faith. He does not want us walking in faith. He wants us to walk in doubt and unbelief. So, oh, I do have it. So without faith, it's impossible to walk with God and please him. Impossible for whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists, that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seeks him. Yes. Now, if you're battling with unbelief, repent and ask the Lord, like that guy in the Bible said, Lord, I, I, you know, help my unbelief. I want to believe, but help me. But how do we get help by that? Well, by daily time, having our daily time with the Lord, but have communion, read the word, and then, you know, then renounce the, well, every time you're downing, renounce that and just say, Lord, give me perspective. Help me with it. When you become so one with the word, it's a supernatural thing when you're reading the Bible. When you become so one with it, it overrides it. It really does. It overrides your, your doubt and unbelief. So um, I, I'm going to pass a, cup, a couple of scriptures. Um, you know, I, wrote, I was um, in Matthew, in Mark, and I was paralleling all the areas where Jesus told the people, his disciples, to have faith. But I'm going to just read this portion in Mark 11, 22 and 23. I know you all know this, but I'm going to read it. Jesus replied in the Passion, let the faith of God be in you, of God. See, when you're in his presence, it's God's faith. It's not you trying to do it. Let the faith of God be in you. Listen to the truth I speak to you. In other words, meditate on the word. Listen to what the word is saying. If someone says to you, this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. So you have to be, again, dwelling. Let's go back to Psalm 91. You have to be so one and so united with the word that the word is more of a reality than what you're dealing with. Yes. See, and that's possible. That's what he's, in, he's encouraged us to do. Faith is strong. In Strong's definition, it means faith means conviction confidence, trust, belief, reliance, trustworthiness, and persuasion. There is a confident trust, even though there's times that I have trusted God, and even though I, I tr was trusting, I was still had uh, Italians say we had Ajuna inside. I was, I was concerned. I, I was nervous. I was fearful. Like, but sometimes it seems like you're not in faith, but I said, no, I don't care what I feel like. I'm moving forward. I'm choosing to trust God. There's been times, you know, even in sowing money, when the Lord's told me to give X amount of dollars, I'm like, oh, boy. And so, but I said, Lord, I choose to trust you, you know. And, and it's like, wow, it's just such liberty comes as a result of that or trusting for healing. You know, you all heard us talk about our testimony with our son when the doctor said he was dead. My God says he's alive. Yes. There was such a war. And I'm telling you, with this COVID thing, I'm not denying that situations haven't happened. I, we know of people that have passed. But I'm not going to allow that to dictate how I move forward. Yes. Do I trust God or not? Yes. And so I'm not going to be foolish, but I know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me about him being my healer and my deliverer and my restorer. And so, again, I'm not going to allow certain people in government dictate to me how my life and my health is going to go. The word of God is. The Bible says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. And the Lord says that he is the Lord God, my healer, my deliverer, my restorer. We've got to allow the word. So it says here in Mark eleven twenty two 22 and 23, let the faith of God be in you. Listen to the truth. Oh, I read this. I'll read it again. Listen to the truth. I speak to you. If someone says to this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. Yes. You understand? That's so resolute. That is confident. It's like, I'm not doubting that. If I said it, if he said it, it's going to happen. So we have to have that trustworthiness. Now, if you're not there, I want to encourage you. You can get there, yes. right? You can get in the Word, meditate in the Word. That's the way it comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. It's up to us to develop our faith. We are, um, you know, responsible for our own development. Listen, you can be saved 20 years and have two months' faith. But you have, to, you have to decide where you're at. I just know that I want to keep moving on. I don't want to stay stuck. I don't want to just keep focus on all the giants in the land. Lord saying, if I can be like a David, take that stone and knock him out and, and, and throw that stone in his head. He said, I don't come to you 
He says, I come to you. I'm not coming to you in my flesh. He says, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord whom you have defied. And the enemy out there and the government and certain people, it's not, listen, the, the government's not the enemy. The devil's the devil. Remember who our fight is against. But he's saying, I'm coming in the name of the Lord, and we are coming in the name of the Lord whom the enemy has defied. And there are people who have been very deceived that have been having an antichrist agenda. And see, the church has to rise up and say, mm -mm -mm, you're not crossing this boundary line. And so, you know, fear cancels our faith, and fear brings doubt and unbelief. That's what he's after. So if you're really struggling with fear, when I'm getting afraid, I go back into the word. I'm like, Lord, what's my problem? Why am I getting so caught up in this? Is there a root in me, or, or am I just getting so caught up with everything that's out there? And then I get back to the meditation of the word. You see, and that's what brings deliverance. I love, 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 love this scripture. But the end, I wrote here, the enemy is limited in attacking the church, so he attacks our faith. If he can get us to be carnal, secular Christians, that's his goal. <clears throat> but in 1 John 5, 4, in a message, I love this. The power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. Do you hear me? Do you think the world needs Jesus? Do you think the world needs an awakening and revival? Listen, I'm going to read it again. The conquering power that brings the world to our knees is our faith. Do you realize why the enemy is going to go after our faith? Because you can't tell me anything different when I'm standing in faith. When I heard a word from the Lord, you're not going to tell me anything different. So no unbelief. We, we focus on how terrible our situation is, and that's what you focus on, you empower. So if you're focusing on all the 14,000 deaths of COVID that some of them, I think, is embellished a little bit. But, you know, they're constantly saying, why don't you put out how many people are healed? Why don't you put out how many people are doing well with the medicine that's out there with the z pack and the, the malaria medicine? Why don't you put that out? No, we have to exaggerate everything about how everybody's dying. Well, not everybody's dying. Some people have died. Yes. But come on. So what about abortion? Let me go there for a minute. There are more aborted babies than there were of people who died of COVID. Let's go there. So come on. So no unbelief. Unbelief comes by hearing and focusing on things contrary to the word of God. That's not going to be my game. I'm going to focus on what the word says. In Psalm 107, 20, it says, He sends forth his word, and he heals them and rescues them from the pit and the destruction. That's God's plan. And so even as we're praying and releasing the word of God, it, it, it brings deliverance and it rescues people from the pit and destruction. Right. We send forth the word. There is power in our mouths. This is the decade, the era of the mouth. Our decrees are powerful. And so if he can, if he can um, what do you call that, cause mixture of doubt and unbelief, that's what he wants because then it's not sent, being sent forth and delivering people from the pit of destruction. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I, I have a couple of portions that I was going to go through in Matthew and Mark, but I'm going to skip that because I really want to get to Isaiah. But I want to read a word that, that Chuck Pierce prophesied. There's two words that he prophesied. This one was in October of 11 of 2018 in Tennessee. And Chuck said, excuse me, over the next two years, you will see one of the greatest separations in the nation. It will almost look like the civil war has come, but it's just that God is going to have to define the separation so we fully understand it. It will cause his people filled with the spirit to rise up as one. See, and it says here, it is what is going to happen to us. We won't have time for this racism issue or political squabbling. Now, that was in 2018. It says, we won't have time for all that because we're going to have to be one in him as a people. The voices with the anointing, we're going to have to learn to follow after, anoint, after the anointing and be able to see the anointing because the separation is going to be greater and greater. Are you hearing me? Yeah. That's why we have got to be one. We've got to be one in spirit. We have to know our God and do great exploits for him. We have to walk in faith. We're a great 10 years ago or 12 years ago, the Lord had given me a word that he is raising up a Gideon 300 army. And I, and I felt like that was worldwide. People who, you know, remember Gideon was all battling fear and worry when you read through uh, Gideon, uh, Judges 6, I believe. And so 
uh, initially when he was going to war, I think he had like 20,000 men, and the Lord dropped it down to 300, the remnant. Are you hearing me? There's always been a remnant, a smaller number. But those who believe in their God, who don't look to the left nor to the right, will do great exploits. See, we have to rise up and be one in him. We have to rise up as people of faith. Then Chuck prophesied in August 19 of 2019, he said, we are entering into an era, a decade called speaking forth your liberty. We need to speak forth our liberty. We need to say, devil, you are not taking our country over. There will not be, I prophesy, we will not be taken over by socialism or Marxism or communism in Jesus' name. We will be a free nation. We are going to see much upheaval coming in the earth realm that you'll just have to hang on for dear life because there will be so many issues rearranged because of the voices that are coming forth. It's what the whole next decade is about, and each year will have a different significance of how we speak. Now, we have gotten, you hear the word, the prophets, the Bible says in Amos 6 that, that the Lord doesn't do anything unless he reveals it to his prophets. Now, I know there are many other prophets, but Chuck is our prophet. We're, we're aligned with Chuck Pierce and Cindy Jacobs and Dutch Sheets and, you know, but they have been prophesying, and so we have got to be people of faith. I can't reemphasize this enough. Fear is not your God, okay? Unbelief is not your God. Doubt is not your God. God is saying, I will always make a way of escape for you. I'll help you out of every situation. See, just ask him to help you. But, but make a decision. I'm going to focus on the word. Stop with running here and there and everywhere. Right. Get your behinds down and sit and stay before the Lord. Start out with 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Just start if you're not doing it. But God is saying, listen, I want you to come into that secret place with me.